How do we get water? It is a legit question, even though it may seem a little bit silly because, well, we are surrounded by it. Water is, I would say, the most important resource on a boat. Well, for anybody, period, but especially on a boat because you literally cannot survive without it. And as sailors, we have, well, one blaringly obvious choice for getting water, which would be a marina. But marinas don't exist everywhere and we don't spend our time always at a marina. We're usually out. We very rarely go to a marina. So we are left with three main options for water sources. Uh, rainwater, water maker, and of course like a public source. So we'll start with the first one which is rainwater. So we collect rainwater in buckets all the time and you would be amazed at just like one good rainstorm will fill up every bucket we have. So it's great for general cleaning and just like washing the boat, laundry, whatever. But of course we don't drink that because that requires a lot of filtration and purification. Which brings us to the next thing, a water maker. But Jason's gonna tell you about that. So a water maker is actually an RO or reverse osmosis system. And it makes the most pure water, literally the most pure water of any sort of water filter, I think or filtration, is it filtration or? Purification. Purification, that's it. Uh, it turns salt water into fresh water, which still blows my mind, which means we have unlimited water on our sailboat because we're literally floating on salt water all the time. It'll also clean the, if you're in a freshwater lake or whatever. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. Our system is a manual system, which means it's more hands-on, which kind of, well, was overwhelming at first, but now it's just sort of, second nature. I mean, it's really not that difficult to use. So I'm on the floor here because I sing a, ours is installed in, oh, I forgot to open the compartment. Ours is installed in the engine compartment. The RO membrane, the high pressure pump, and the boost pump are all separate parts. So it's easier to install in tight spaces like this engine compartment, and it's easier to repair or replace each individual piece if they break. This is the 120 volt model, which means we have to run the generator when we are making water, which is kind of a bummer, but we make 40 gallons an hour, and 40 gallons an hour is huge because we use about 40 to 50 gallons a week to drink, cook, and do like a load of laundry. So that's a really nice number, 40 gallons an hour. We only run it for an hour once a week or so. This particular unit was installed on our boat when we bought it. If we would have gotten to choose our own, we probably would have gone for the 12 volt model. Uh, since we have a lithium battery bank, we could actually run the water maker off of our batteries instead of running a generator. And that would have been nice. But that said, I mean, I do like kicking on the generator, doing laundry and everything while we're running the water maker. So it's really, it's, it's no big deal. I can say that Cruise RO has been extremely helpful in this process of me learning how to use it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Jason is really distracted, because oh, cat. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. Uh, just their customer service is like top notch and he's helped me through a lot of my questions. Um, Rich, he's the owner of the company and I actually asked him if he could give us a discount and he said, no, there's no discount code I can give you because there's not that high of a markup. But he did offer up a free cruisers kit, which is like 200 plus dollars worth of stuff like filters and other accessories you're going to want to buy anyway. So if you do end up with a cruise RO system, make sure you use the code WINS when you buy it and you'll get that free cruisers kit. But no matter what, 100%, 1000%, if you can afford and you have the space for an RO water maker, no matter what brand, 12 volt, big 120 volt, like it doesn't matter. You're going to be super stoked when you're making water in the middle of nowhere. Just, I don't know, it still blows my mind. Being able to make water, fresh drinking water from the ocean. So it's the best yeah, way Yeah, it's definitely the best way water. to get water into your sailboat. But what if you don't have a water maker or what if you're in like a super dirty river where you don't want to run your water maker or perhaps your water maker is broken? 
It's happened a couple of times. <laughs> then what? That's when we go to land. As I mentioned earlier, a marina would be the obvious choice if you were going to head to land, right? But it's not the only choice, not by a long shot. And there's not always a marina. But there's almost always either a gas station or a local or somebody who has set up a dock and put in a spigot for cruisers. Because while where there's a congregation of boats, there's always going to be a water supply. So when we head to land, if we don't know where to go and find water, then we just simply ask a local or motor up to one of the other boats and ask where they're getting water from. If nobody else exists, then I'd find myself some sort of government office, city hall, whatever, but I've never needed to get to that point. There's always somebody or it's in a cruiser guide or it's pretty obvious, one of the two. But you still always have the question of, is it potable or is it not potable? And even if it is potable, how sanitary is it? So this is the cruiser's dock and the cruiser's water here in Tahiti. And this is pretty typical, although this is really nice, because while there's actually a hose here, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. And even if there is, it's not typically an actual drinking hose, much less well, who's had it before you and what they've done with it before you? We've seen this sitting in buckets of people's dirty laundry, hung down just hanging in the salt water, you know, all kinds of stuff. So then, do you trust it? Would you really want to put that into your storage tanks and drink it? Most sailors don't, and wisely so, which means they end up going into town, finding a store, and purchasing water. Cruisers here in Tahiti have it really good because that dock with the water is super convenient to get to and it's free, which is not common. And I mean, still the water is great for washing and cleaning and all the general purposes on the boat. I just wouldn't want to drink it. If you need drinking water, it's a half a mile walk to the grocery store, which is still pretty close as far as cruisers go. So this five liter jug is the largest water size they have here. It's $3.30. So the average person needs to consume around two liters a day. So for the two of us, that's four liters a day, 28 liters a week, and what, about 60 pounds in water to carry back? Yeah, six of these jugs. That's a lot of plastic waste, so it's bad for the environment, definitely bad for our arms, and just not very convenient or easy or fun or anything else. Bringing it back to the boat and how we get water, we really use all three methods. We collect rainwater, we use our water maker, it's definitely our primary method of getting water, and we use the public sources too. And when we go get water from whatever local tap we can find. We do put it into our tanks and we do drink it, but with a big butt. <laughs> big butt. <laughs> we filter and purify it first. We'll save that for the next video, which will cover storing water on a boat and how we filter and purify our water to make it safe to drink. If we now, miss something or if you know of some other way to get water that we totally just glossed over, if, please Leave it in the comment yeah. box down below. If you have any questions about the RO, anything else, share it in the, <laughs> the comment box below. We have a website. Yeah, oh, uh, speaking of website, <laughs> I have written loads more information on our website. So if you want to check that out, if you've got questions about, I don't know, anything, look there. Uh, wow, are you thirsty? <laughs> the grocery store is a half a mile away and it's hot. <laughs> you say half a mile like that's really far. <laughs> it so is. Far. It's exceptionally hot. It is time to get the water. Yeah, so that's it for us today. We'll see you in, well, soon. Yeah. Very soon with more water talk. Stay hydrated. That was awesome. I know. You missed it. I thought you were going to forget to say it. Hashtag stay hydrated. Plastic free. <laughs> I think that's a hashtag. <laughs> we'll make it one. Okay, okay, I gotta get up, I gotta get up, kitty.